so digital transformation is the way we do the business any business we do that would change if we uh, adopt the digital transformation and it is the process for using digital technologies to modify or create new business processes culture and customer experience so here we have to uh, like uh, focus uh, customer experience is the major part that is dri driving the remaining factors like uh, how we should do the the quality monitoring or the efficiency has to be done and everything should be on demand with the required quality so customer experience is the major factor that is driving the digital transformation and what are the important components for the digital transformation innovation collaboration experience infrastructure moderation operation excellence information and insights so these are the factors and each these factors or the components are comprising different kind of technologies so these uh, components would be fulfilled by either we take iot machine learning cloud computing big data smart manufacturing so there are different kind of terms or technology that we are using to achieve digital transformation so uh, here we can see that digital transformation is comprising with different kind of technologies what kind of communication technology we are using data how we are uh, uh, exploiting or we are consuming iot automation ai networking so there are many other effect, uh, uh, technologies or the factors also there uh, that are um, that are defining digital transformation but majorly we have taken few of the things that are more relevant towards the industrial automation or industrial transformation so this is a, a video about uh, digital transformation probably you can information initiatives yet on the rise many companies are asking themselves the question what is digital transformation digital transformation is the technology driven evolution of your operations your product life cycles and business models to meet the changing expectations of your customers and workforce it's a strategic initiative to modernize your processes streamline more efficient ways of working and create new opportunities to provide value to customers facilitated by digital technologies. At PTC, we think of it as closing the loop between your digital and physical worlds so you can bring more innovative products and solutions to the market while building a dynamic, highly engaged workforce. For industrial enterprises, digital transformation has become an urgent business imperative with mounting cost pressures and the constant threat of disruption driving the need to become more agile and efficient. Surviving in the increasingly digital future means investing now, but adopting new technology and scaling it out can be complex. Success isn't guaranteed, and while most industrial organizations have already begun their digital transformation journey, many have failed to realize the full value and potential of their technology investments. Companies that have been successful start by defining a compelling business case that identifies how and where digital solutions can provide measurable business value. Implementing digital technologies often requires making systemic changes to long-standing processes. So it's equally important to foster a strong digital culture and get alignment across your organization from the top floor to the shop floor. As a digital transformation partner with a leading portfolio of purpose-built solutions, PTC is helping industrial companies to improve their bottom line, drive revenue growth, and facilitate better customer experiences. We use our digital technology to transform the physical world while keeping an eye out for what's next. So uh, this gives a brief uh, uh, idea about digital transformation. And it shows all the kind of technology that we are discussing discussing today uh, nowadays, or we can foresee that that would be utilized to uh, to fulfill our dreams or the the mandate given by different uh, forums, uh, industries, or the standard standards. So now we can we would start uh, why digital transformation is required. So this is basically uh, the value addition. Until unless we don't do value addition customer satisfaction cannot be achieved so how do we do the value addition it is 80 percent of time we would uh, we would achieve more in life engagement we would have 50 percent increase in sales if we uh, adopt digital transformation 
53 percent of higher traffic of the the incoming queries uh, 69 percent improve customer satisfaction 49 percent increase leads generation per sales so these are the uh, the value additions would be given by digital transformation basically most of the things are already in place but how we can connect them together to achieve the ultimate goal of increasing the revenue and the customer satisfaction that is the that is how digital transformation is working so most of the things that we would be discussing you would you would have heard bits and pieces but when we talk about digital transformation we have to converge all those technologies or the processes into a single one so that we can achieve a single goal of uh, customer satis satisfaction and increase sales so uh, if we talk about smart factories how the manufacturers are getting uh, big gains by adopting the smart, by adopting the digital transformation so we have shown one comparison uh, between 1990s the the left uh, orange color you will see it is 1990s uh, data and the right one is the yellow is uh, in the next five years uh, so here if we talk about on time delivery it would be 5.52% uh, or uh, earlier it was 0.42% and now after five years it would be 5.52 so 13 times it would increase the similarly quality and scrap it would be 12% incre increment would be there capex and inventory 12% increment material logistics and transportation would have 11% increment labor cost will have uh, 9 9% uh, 9 uh, increment and um, overall productivity would be seven times uh, uh, increased in compared to 1990s so uh, this is the uh, the way smart factories are gaining annually uh, from 1990s after adopting the digital transformation or the smart processes that that we define and if we take some example of business businesses like mining and metal industry there we uh, we are achieving 400 billion market opportunity if we uh, if we uh, adopt digital transformation this similarly electric electricity sector would be having 1.3 trillion opportunity and chemical industries 550 billion dollars opportunity by adopting the different technologies so this was the uh, the motivation behind adopting the digital transformation uh, now we would discuss what are, who are the stakeholders in digital transformation who are participating to adopting it or to promoting it so basically the current ecosystem latest technology decision makers and the customers these are the major uh, stakeholders for uh, getting adoption of digital transformation so current ecosystem we talk about always industries have been very uh, advanced in compared to the other domains like consumer domain or the commercial domain industries always very far ahead adopting in adopting the different technologies so already uh, industries are using some kind of uh, uh, like advanced technology but how we can bring it or the advanced uh, technology like ar vr machine learning so that the overall efficiency efficiency can be improved and the ultimate aim of uh, uh, total equipment uh, uh efficiency can be uh, can be achieved so this is the current ecosystem that we have like oem I, idms odms these are the people who are already working is in this domain uh, we can say industrial automation these are those people and then these are the technologies that are uh, driving uh, to adopt digital transformation it is mes manufacturing education uh, execution system manufacturing operation management product uh, plm asset health monitoring resource management and sustainability digital twin predictive maintenance and additive uh, manufacturing so these are the major things that are uh, driving force for the industrial uh, transformation and few of the, these are the few of the industries that are adopting uh, have uh, shown uh, uh, transportation building automation plastic uh, uh, industry oil oil and gas, mining industry, textile, and there are many, uh, I think each and every industry is now trying to adopt in some or other way, uh, either industry 4.0 or digital transformation. So 
now we have to check how the modern technologies are uh, accelerating the adoption so if we start with industry 4.0 industry 4.0 is uh, the fourth industrial revolution earlier three industrial revolution have happened first one was um, with the uh, the mechan mechanical uh, mechanization when it happened then electricity was invented then the second uh, uh, revolution was happened then when we we were having electronics in our manufacturing that was the third industrial revolution and the fourth industrial revolution is the one when we are having cyber physical system together so it and ot both are together then it is called uh, fourth industrial revolution and these are the different technologies that are participating to make industry 4.0 successful so this is the same thing that i mentioned that uh, there were four industrial uh, revolution and cyber physical systems are coming together to uh, make the smart factories and if we see the left hand side the operation technology and the right hand side it is the information technology so ot this is the inventory machine assets production systems these have been there for many many years and it is the upcoming technology that are joining hands with operation technologies to make connected factories or uh, and uh, uh, adoption of the digital transformation so it we have uh, iot cloud computing big data additive manufacturing robotics augmented reality cyber security m2m so these are the uh, technology that are coming together and making the connected factory and uh, the impact of industry 4.0 we are having different kind of um, kpis that we have to maintain and we have to make sure that we get the maximal uh, efficiency output by using the different practices defined by industry 4.0 and we have different kind of machine data production data and we can visualize all these things to on, in a single dashboard and we can take the intelligent decisions so when we talk about industry 4.0 iot would help to bring all the machine data or the the different kind of sensor data on a single dashboard and based on the different data we can see that what is the production count is happening and are we meeting the target per day or per week or per month target production criteria and we can take the the required decisions if the targets are not met so that is the uh the aim of industry 4.0 uh, if we talk about uh, the the further impact of industry 4.0 near term and long term if we divide so near term it would be the operation efficiency we can achieve we can make sure that asset utilization every machine is maximally utilized optimally utilized we can reduce the operation cost Produ uh, worker productivity can be increased so this is the immediate or near term uh, uh, advantage and then new product and services we can use this is again in long term if, if we talk about it would be uh, increasing the outcome economy the the complete uh, 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 profitability of the uh, the industry can be improved and we can have autonomous and full economy so it would be continuous demand sensing based on the demand we can uh, make the production so this would be totally uh, like very tightly coupled uh, and uh, just in time kind of uh, thing so depending upon the demand and supply, uh, we can create the supply so this is the short term and long term goal and there are some challenges uh, uh, when we do the business planning uh, that is uh, uh, how we can uh so uh, it's sometimes it is hard to know what what to uh, predict uh, and uh, it is more reactive planning that is uh, one of the thing that uh, is happening because of that we have to adopt the new uh, technologies or new processes uh, other technology that we have iot uh, that is very much adopted in uh, industrial automation cloud computing is one of them you can see that there are different machines uh, or the the component like pump chiller data all data is coming from the industrial stand uh, interfaces and coming to the cloud and we can monitor each and every single machines uh, operations and the even power consumption energy, energy con consumption and we can decide that how should be the behavior of each and every machine 
so that is the uh, the thing that we can achieve by using cloud computing and industry 4.0 then edge ai is uh, application of ai ml where we can implement the intelligent decision instead of cloud we can do it at, at the edge side the device side or the gateway side and we can uh, this is very important for the industrial because they, it is very much uh, time critical decision we have to take and uh, if uh, we implement on cloud it would be uh, very much uh, delayed uh, that's why the the important decision has to be taken at the edge side and ai is very much preferred for that and this is a uh, dashboard for the industrial production we can see that um, uh, key performance indicator or overall equipment e uh, efficiency what is happening that we can see and here in the right hand side we can see that what is the current rate of uh, production and what is the target rate if it is not meeting we can uh, do a deeper analysis and we can decide what is not working and if something is not working we have to uh, like uh, our top management because they can only see these kpis they cannot go on the shop floor or factory floor uh, all the time and check the the operations of each and every machine so they have to have a single dashboard where all the information from all the plants from all the machine is coming and they can see that what is working fine and if it is something is there are some um, uh, indicators that they have to look into immediately to maintain the uh, the supply uh, then they have to uh, take the preventive or pre predictive actions now we come to the uh, another technology that is uh, predictive maintenance this is very much uh, uh, in use uh, in the industries earlier uh, we were using uh, reactive uh, approach where the equipment was down then only we used to take the uh, decision then uh, preventive came when we were having the scheduled maintenance to make sure that particular machine is not uh, uh, breaking down so to uh, to uh, minimize the uh, unplanned breakdown of machines we were having preventive uh, maintain, maintenance so it was doing the schedule maintenance then condition monitoring we were having kind of real time monitoring uh, that what is happening in the machine now this is the latest approach that we are having predictive maintenance where based on the data that is coming from machine or the environments uh, environmental uh, parameters we decide what should be is there any chance of failure of any machine if there is a chance then we have to uh, we have to predict in future basically and uh, whatever precautionary action we have to take we take it uh, under predictive maintenance so here we use uh, iot machine learning cloud computing or, and big data these are the technology that are used in predictive maintenance this is uh, the implementation like we have different kind of uh, machine parts sensors and we are capturing uh, this data uh, data could be thermal oil vibration ultrasonic uh, current voltage magnetic field sound so we are using uh, uh, different sensors we are capturing this physical quantity we are bringing it to the server side uh, using uh, uh, iot and uh, different communication technology and there we run machine learning algorithm to find out what is the remaining useful lifetime or time to failure of a particular machine so there are different kind of algorithms that we can run and we can predict that without having any maintenance how long a particular machine can run and if there is a we see that some particular machine can fail then the immediately event would be generated and the notification visualization whatever it would be given to uh, uh, the assigned person and the required maintenance would be done so this is uh, how uh, ment uh, predictive maintenance works this is the another way of uh, showing predictive maintenance here again we are doing the sensor uh, detection uh, this is showing a complete factory part and this part we are doing the sen sensor detection uh, or the different physical parameter detection and we are capturing data here we are running the machine on the data center we are running the machine learning uh, algorithms for doing the anomaly detection or the remaining useful lifetime so there are different kind of criteria to uh, to predict uh, the machine health basically and uh, if there is something then uh, it 
it would automatically generate uh, alert to the maintenance worker so that he would he can do the uh, the required maintenance and uh, uh, overall down downtime can be reduced for that particular machine so that is the ultimate aim here we are showing the predictive maintenance uh, dashboard here how many downtime occurred 714 how many alarms downtime duration uh, model accuracy so all this kind of data we can bring for all machine in a, on a single uh, dashboard then uh, in digital transformation robotics also plays a big role AR, VR, and remote control uh, is also very useful because every time uh, the expert cannot be on the shop floor. If something is not working fine, they can uh, remotely monitor the things and they can guide to the person who is on the shop floor. Uh, similarly, we have AR for maintenance, uh, augmented reality. Here we are having digital twin for uh, each and every machine part in a uh, physical world to the cyber world. So we have uh, one replica in the cyber world and we can do all kind of analysis in the cyber world. And after doing the analysis, we can do the fixing in the physical world. That's how the uh, it is working. Uh, it is showing the same thing. We are having a physical space, some uh, uh, machines and take data to the virtual space. We do the uh, analysis and then bring it back to the physical space. That's how the digital twins are working. And this is the, uh, the visualization and contextualization of the, uh, the digital twin. We can make exact replica of a physical device, physical machine in a cyberspace. So the benefit of digital twins are we can improve the cost efficiency. Uh, it would increase the product design and usability, support quality assurance, augment staff uh, collaboration, and it would accelerate the new product launch and R&D. Basically, it would give more control and confidence in your production uh, capabilities. And uh, it would definitely uh, reduce the, uh, the downtime and uh, uh, whenever the, the things are not working fine. And it would uh, increase the uh, product launch time. Uh, like uh, 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 the product launch time can be uh, shortened. Uh, and uh, overall prof profitability can be increased. This is the uh, virtual real reality that you can visualize within the machine. Uh, this is again a part of digital transformation. Now 5G is also launched a, a lot of, uh, a lot many countries are adopting 5G. So 5, in 5G, there is a special provision for uh, digital transformation because it caters lot many uh, applications it has high mobile broad, uh, broadband connection, uh, uh, like high data rate it can achieve up to uh, say uh, 10 Gbps, you can get uh, data rate in the coming time. And uh, this is the, the natural progression from the, uh, from the legacy networks like 4G, we have increased to the 5G. Uh, these two dimensions that we are seeing at the bottom line, machine uh, massive machine type communication and ultra reliable low latency communication these are keeping in mind iot and industrial in uh, industrial transformation in mind so when we talk about massive machine type communication whenever there are lot many sensors and they have to communicate to uh, directly to the uh, server then we have to have very much reliable uh, uh, connectivity so this is called massive. Massive means lot many uh, sensors are connected. So one example is the smart city. So smart city, we know that lot many sensors would be there. Lot of applications would be running at the same time. So how the communication has to happen? That is especially especially taken care by 5G. And this is driven because of the uh, political reasons. Um, uh, because LP WAN low low wide low power wide area network is also giving this kind of capability so that was a big threat for the cellular network that's why they have incorporated these kind of features in 5g then another is another one is the ultra level and low latency communication this is for the very critical applications where the latency has to be as low as possible uh, so industrial automation if we talk about this is very critical because there 
machine has to respond if there is some error happening machine has to be respond within a fraction of microseconds or milliseconds we can say so that kind of reliability and low latency has to be given by some communication technology so 5g has taken care of this so uh, this was the different technologies that are imparting in making digital transformation successful now we would discuss how to get start with the digital transformation journey uh, so there are multiple stages that we can uh, uh, think of so here we have taken three stages uh, one is uh, 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 data digitization then second stage is the business digitization and the third one is the digital transformation so digital data digitization of assets process and measurements critical operation uh, applications data integration and operation matrix so basically this is towards the the iot uh, very much iot side uh, where we have to capture the or acquire the physical data into the uh, the the signal form and we have we have to take it to the uh, to the cloud server the second one is the kind of uh, business intelligence where ai ml would be used and the third one is the towards uh, overall uh, enterprise level for the top management how the uh, the operation and business they have to work they have to function then how the skill and competency has to be developed how the customer interaction and response has to be defined all these things would be done uh, in the third stage so uh, first we have to define the like when we will we would plan we have to start from the third one then we have to put, come to the first one and the, then we have to come to the second one but this is the uh, the way when we would be implementing it would go in this way and uh, we have to make sure uh, uh, like uh, it is very much well planned we have to take care of uh, what is the demand what is the supply and once all these things are in place this is the this is how the normal business is functioning when we talk about digital transformation once demand and supply is uh, sorted out we have to make sure that data and information that is coming from different segments is this, it is properly taken care while functioning of all the operations so here we have to make sure that uh, solution configuration digital marketing demand planning supply management uh, and uh, uh, workflow management all these things are placed properly to get the maximum benefit of the digital transformation so uh, whatever functionality has been given that has to be incorporated in the existing system that's how the digital transformation starts working and in a simple simple way how to achieve digital transformation we have to start from some uh, some point then we have to engage with right leadership team define our organization approach we have to decide our core operating model identify better and smarter kpis recognize the need of data ob observability create a workplace culture that embraces change and we have to find new opportunity for digital growth so these are the different uh, steps to achieve digital transformation now we would discuss about current deployment and challenges so digital transformation is a like very complex uh, uh, journey we can say so the success rate could be very low if it is not planned very well and if it, we have not foresee all kind of things uh, uh, and all the steps are not very much planned then the success could be very low so we can start seeing from uh, down um, uh, 20% uh, of time uh, the 20% uh, people are uh, here 20% people are in the early phase only they don't go further they st stay only uh, very early stage then 37% goes up to the pilot phase 13% are uh, stuck in pilot and unclear about the results so they keep on like rolling uh, in the same circle and 
then further 20 percent are uh, uh, make the progress and they start uh, creating the value and selling the uh, value and eight percent is the only real success that achieve the ultimate goal of the digital transformation so this is the the thing happening is under digital transformation people are very much uh, sometimes confused that what is the ultimate aim they are going to achieve and uh, uh, the success rate is still very low and the challenges under digital transformation that 81% have uh, failed 81% uh, uh, of digital projects have failed or they have suffered delays or they have scaled back so whatever they were uh, at the earlier stage they have come back to the same stage and 86% of businesses have prevented from pursuing the new transformation project and digital services. 42% uh, are behind schedule or at the risk of falling behind. So this is because of uh, poor planning and uh, poor integration of the different technologies. So barrier to digital transformation that uh, business business case identification 10% of people fail because of this people, employees are not properly trained we have adopted the the process but employees don't know how to react on that how to utilize it so because of this issue 25% of cases uh, are failing short term revenue target uh, people think that digital transformation we can achieve uh, uh, better Revenue targets in a short term, but that is not possible. Digital transformation is a long way journey. It takes time to uh, to uh, pay back. Then data issues are 45%. All the things are related to data. And there are some complicated, uh, uh, like uh, we, they have to follow some compliances. If they are not following, then um, uh, there is a chance that uh, the digital transformation would fail. Digital skills shortage is because of 60% uh, cases are failing legacy system and processes some of the processes are not supporting uh, digital transformation because they those were developed a long back and there are no interfaces that we can capture the data from there so because of this the digital transformation is failing or it is getting delayed and these are the cases 70% uh, of cases are due to this and uh, if we talk about country wise how the adoption is happening in india we are still lacking much behind uh, this is taken for a case how the robots are being uh, utilized on shop floor one of the case taken for the digital transformation so india is uh, like uh, much behind in compared to russia brazil Ch china uk us where we are having only three uh, industrial robots per 10000 employees but uh, if we talk about the uh, south korea it is having it is uh, at the topmost level 631 robots per 10000 employees they are utilizing so they are uh, other countries are much ahead in uh, adoption of digital transformation this there are some success success stories also uh, in the uh, industries duke energy they are they have successfully achieve the digital transformation. They have uh, uh, deployed 30,000 sensors across the facilities and they have time to value. Uh, the sensor have enabled to develop 10,000 models to catch failures before they occur. So predictive maintenance they have, uh, uh, they have successfully uh, implemented and 385 predict predictive finds over the course three years allowed to, uh, to avoid at least 45 million in repair cost. So they have saved 45 million within a three years of time by adopting the digital transformation. So digital transformation, uh, if we summarize, it is uh, uh, basically a journey uh, that uh, is comp comprising different kind of disruptive technologies and they are changing the way customers and employees are behaving and industries are uh, uh, using, uh, and the, we have to update the legacy technology so that we can update uh, the, uh, the, the old systems to adopt the digital uh, transformation. And digital transformation is not a end goal. It is a continuous journey that we have discussed. Mm -hmm. So this is the summary. And now we briefly talk about Unicorn technology. Uh, our company, uh, 
it is having different verticals. We have one vertical is ad tech, another is the product division, and the, the third one is the consulting one. So in ad tech, we are having IoT Academy and Upskill, where we are running different programs like government skill program, uh, corporate program, uh, instructor-based training, self-paced. In industrial automation or digital transformation, we can say this is the, the vertical that we are working. We are giving a uh, lot of solutions to the smart cities, agri-tech, industrial IoT and digital transformation. We are also acting as OEM and ODM, uh, and we are also embedded product design uh, design services. In consulting, we are giving the comp competency building, technology consulting, and staffing. So basically, here we are having a lot many customers in India and abroad. This is uh, the, the things we are giving in the digital transformation domain. We are having IIoT products. We have IIoT solutions. So product is the single like uh, single uh, uh, hardware unit, but uh, uh, we are giving end-to-end -end solutions also from uh, end device till the gateway connection and the analytics part. And we are also providing the OEM services to the different clients. And if we talk about in digital transformation, some details we are giving put, uh, in hardware part, we are giving protocol converters, sensors, IoT gateways. In LoRaWAN, we are pioneer in India. We are giving uh, LoRaWAN IOs, LoRaWAN gateways, LoRaWAN servers, LoRaWAN servers. And in so solutions, if we talk about, we are giving a manufacturing uh, uh, efficiency solution, then product management, uh, asset health monitoring, flow monit uh, metering, energy monitoring, these kind of solutions we are providing. And in uh, predictive maintenance, we are giving sensors technology and the analytics part. So this is the, the things uh, that we are providing. And here we can show that we are working in different verticals from Wi-Fi, LPVAN to NB, IoT, and LTM. So we are providing different kind of solutions. So this was the brief, uh, I think uh, we have now on our time. I would hand over to my colleague, uh, Mr. Arun Kumar Singh. He's from uh, Phytech and he's uh, director of sales in Phytech. Phytech is a, uh, a very uh, innovative company based in Germany and he's heading a, a sales division in India. So I would hand over to Mr. Uh, Arun. He is a partner to Uniconverse Technologies. We have been working for a long time and uh, he would give some insights about uh, their products, how they are uh, uh, like uh, leveraging uh, digital transformation, transformation with their products. So over to you, Arun sir. Thank uh, you very much, Kaushal ji, and good morning to everyone. I will share my screen. I will start the presentation. Uh, I think somebody is there who can give me the presenter mode. I think I can I can give you uh, let me check if I can give you uh, which you have joined with two names uh, which yes, I, I think mm -hmm. okay are you able to see my screen yes sir I can see your screen yes, sir I hope it is visible to everyone Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Kaushal has uh, very elaborately discussed about digital transformation and a uh, lot of things, uh, all the features, uh, cause and cons about digital transformation and the space of digital trans transformation in India. So, I represent a company called Phytech Embedded, which manufactures system on modules and single board computers. Anyway, we are having our requirement in every domain of the society. But here I am. I will be specifically mentioning about the smart industry. So what is digital transformation? It's already been described in detail. But for my understanding or for your understanding to make it very simpler, it, this is a three-step process. First process is digitization. Digitization means converting your analog information into digital format. So how you convert your in, uh, analog information means you put up sensors, 
for different machineries for different verticals like temperature pressure if i talk of industry it is temperature pressure uh, humidity lot many sensors can be deployed there proximity and you take this data and use a adc and give this data to a edge computing device which will give you the output which can be posted in the cloud or it can be utilized in the lan network with the servers for analytics so digitization is simply converting the analog data into a digital format but and if the industry is a finance industry the same process will not be utilized there because there you will be collecting the data from the agent who will go to, for insurance he will take your name father's name spouse age medical history all these things he will bring and uh, this is what earlier it was done but right now most of the insurance companies they are all digitally transformed so they will come and then put those data into excel sheet and excel sheet data will be used for data analytics and all so digitization is the first process next process is digitalization so what is digitalization digitalization is the technology where you use the digitized data and start a another new revenue model like for example you can take up the case of earlier we used we all used to go to restaurants for ordering food and physically we visit the restaurant and we order our food from after seeing the menu but now if you are sitting in the night and 10 o'clock if you feel hungry what you do you just open your mobile phone go for zomato select the things and order it and it is coming to your home it is delivered at your home so that is the utilization of your digitized data by all the uh, all uh, restaurants and digitalization you are opening you are taking help of zomato or swiggy to get it transferred to your home place and the third is digital transformation digital transformation according to me is a very huge process it includes digitization digitalization and then is the digital transformation so digital transformation is not a new word it is basically but it has been done earlier by using scada systems your erp solutions lot of different things were done so where we were using this data and analyzing the problems so digital transformation is getting the things automated and you are you can analyze it and more or less it is data analytics okay so we we are basically i will tell you that we are uh, fitech embedded is a company which has been having an experience of 35 years we are the company which is uh, manufacturing oemable modules like single board computers or system on modules so we started in 1986 with 245 employees in germany then we started our second manufacturing unit at uh, america in france it is a political type of thing where we had a very small office but in 2012 in india we started a development center now this development center is doing lot in india on under make in india and lot of the different things fitech china is again our small administrative of office our global employees presence is 500 plus and revenues are more than 300 million so what is fitech fitech is a one stop solution where we are having all the embedded development services like embedded software development services where we are designing software for firmware device driver bsp development middleware development application development linux android and bare metal os is there hardware is our main forte where we sell system on modules single board computers embedded hardware design product engineering services and then we have oem and odm services where we are having ems product manufacturing revenue sharing box build up and third is our resource training and team building resource augmentation offshore development center so these are the four divisions with the help of it we give the total entire all the embedded development services under one roof but you must be interested that wh what is the utility of all these things why i am discussing in digital transformation so there must be a question in your mind that why digital transformation is having all this because if you want to digit digitally transform any industry you need a hardware 
without the help of hardware you cannot do it hardware software and then manufacturing this these are the three parts which is utilized for make, making any industry digitally transformed so as i have told you that we are basically product manufacturing company which designs system on modules single board computers industrial internet of things imaging solutions and we make embedded software also that is your device drivers compilers all these things we make for digital transformation this is a small example of system on modules where we are working with nxp ti st microelectronics renisas and basically system on module is a unit where we are having processor advanced interfaces like so memories like ddr nand and then input output like pci usb gigabit ethernet for display we have lvds rgb and for automotive industry we have can port spi i square c so in the, these all modules are industrial grade an ultra compact and multi layer pcb which is manufactured in our germany office and our us office so this is our main product which we are selling and for using this product we have designed few single board computers so i hope you can see my screen which is having where you can see in the center we have designed a single board computer and the applications are industrial automation energy test and measurement transportation building automation security precision agriculture and medical and healthcare so uh, i will go faster showing you all the applications which are utilized for digital transformation so you can see data loggers human machine interface control panels gateways okay smart manufacturing like robotics thermal imager handheld scanners and few examples this is working examples of which has been utilized by general electric where we have made lufkin well manager then we have hmi for glide similarly for delta you must be knowing delta very well fluke thermal imaging system then in mobility and and energy applications we have e bike shared e bikes battery telematics ev charger vehicle management system device driver fleet management system in vehicle infotainment vehicle diagnostic and remote obd we we are uh, suppliers of uh, digital uh, driver display unit for indian railways if you go in any of the locomotives we are providing this solution then in europe ivu traffic technologies where we are providing the solution of entire vehicle management and ticketing solutions then in energy applications we have wind energy harvesting solar parks uh, your ev charger okay so this is a company in europe where we are giving the solution then refusal is solar inverter and controllers in medical we similarly if you are having a medical industry then we have ecg machines eeg machines patient monitoring x ray biochemistry endoscopy so the process of starting digitalization you cannot do without any proper machine like verathon is using our med this product sensa core blood gas analyzer liquid dispenser by micro lab omilon is healthcare products where you are where we are utilizing spiron levango in commercial applications we have auto repair equipments parking meters biometric coffee machine digital vending machines digital scales auto repair kiosk so i can say that our industry uh, is working in all the parts of your life whether it is a kitchen or it's a rocket launched by isro or nasa so these are the application wherever electronics is there we are there this is android pda we made in long back network time server stesalet is using our handheld gnss smart eye biometrics ngx ecil if you go on airport there are also four uh, four door controllers this is what is our small presentation about digital transformation for with the help of fitech thank you very much if you have any questions you can question it yes sir so so sir we can take the questions or yeah
So So sir there are some questions let us take uh, one by one by one yeah please okay so first question is uh, how do you see the future of augmented reality so this is from devashi sagar uh, see this augmented reality uh, i would say future is good but uh, the the way meta is doing we cannot say that how long time it would take uh, to get the real applications coming from augmented reality things are happening but if we say success at uh, a very uh, very even <laughs> even at the smaller scale that we cannot guarantee as of now so that is my take uh, uh, anushka you, yeah. you want to add something I, yeah 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 just uh, first of all for going into augmented reality first of all digitization is important of the industry if the industry is not automated if all the data all everything we are not getting it on our panel or on our cloud or on our mobile phone i don't understand that augmented reality is going to help us so first of all we have to take our approach step by step means first of all digitization we should do then digitalization and then the digital transformation digital transformation the future of augmented reality is very good because as you have already kaushal ji has mentioned that uh, with the help of these augmented reality and pre preventive and predictive maintenance a person expert sitting in one place can manage few industries means he can be uh, virtually present in three to four industries at one point of time so this is what i expect uh, future is bright but uh, right now we have to go step by step i hope i am clear to devashish sagar any okay 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 thank you sir so next question is cost of implementation need to consider in barrier of digital transformation also plc supplier lead time also needs need to be considered so i think uh, cost of implementation that is uh, uh, definitely it is there we have to consider all kind of cost during the implementation and the planning phase uh arun sir up you want something yeah yeah, yeah please yeah please yeah. add okay uh, kaushal ji thank you very much and uh, milin uh, cost of implementation needs to be considered as you all know that we are presently working in plc domain right now all the industry if we have to automate any industry i have to go to some plc manufacturer or some skada manufacturer and those rates and everything are very high so here comes the what is iot iot applications you can use system on modules single board computers write small small program and convert those application without the help of plc means you can design your own digital device drivers so this is what if india is going to start uh, manufacturing all these products here then it will be really good and the cost can be maintained and the timelines also can be reduced okay thank you okay thank you sir so next is uh, share the ppt we will see that uh, we yeah. we will share the ppt anyway uh, mm. uh, the next question is success rate is extremely low what important changes needs to be incorporated in the system to improve it particularly in india so arun sir you want to take this question yeah yes yeah. very true so success rate is extremely low correct you are very much correct because we are not doing any uh, uh, basically development or any research for automation of industries here in india that's why our success rate is very slow we are very good in application software development and all erps and everything we are we indians are very smart and we are doing a lot in that but for implementing these softwares when we need a sbc or industrial grade sbc then we have to look forward toward china or any other country or any european or us based countries where we have to look for the single board computers industrial grade single board computers which is not available with us and if they are making us those things available to us also they are not sharing the entire data entire inputs and outputs of the, those device so if you want to automate any product you need 
the core level of uh, integration not only the sdk level of integrations you can do so that's why this success rate is slowly uh, very low and now if you we if, uh, if my uh, if the listeners of this uh, webinar they come up with some smart uh, device developments for the industrial applications surely this thing can be taken forward in a big way and we can reach our success rate will be high for industrial automation thank you thank you sir uh, next question is from uh, rohan how can be part of your team and your vision and technology are very far sighted and promising so this is the question from um, rohan uh so, yes kaushal you can uh, yeah yeah so, so basically uh, we people are uh, like uh, unicorn technology and pytech are already partner uh, we know that the kind of solutions we are targeting those are very complex and we have to work together to fulfill to uh, to give the best customer satisfaction to our uh, customers so that's why we are collaborating similarly we are inviting other people also to join hands with us so we are open for anybody who wants to collaborate with us in their capacity uh, to give better solutions uh, arun sir you want to add something more probably you can no no very, very correct kaushal ji uh, we are here in india from last uh, 12 years and we want people from india should design their own products should design their own solve their the problems residing in the society so uh, it is uh, our intention also that uh, the technology and whatever is available with us so we are ready to share it as you must have seen in my presentation that there we are working on swadeshi single board computer along with cdac and now we are planning to Uh, have uh, support from iit madras also for their shakti processor right now we are working on vega processor so this is microprocessor and uh, we have already designed a, a system on module for renisa's risc based uh, so this is uh, risc based processor so right now and these uh, whatever the products which we have designed here in india those are all open source means they they are available in your in our github you can go there you can just have a look to those things and uh, you can use them without any without paying any royalty to anyone okay thank you sir uh, there is another question from dheeraj patra can we customize uh, software of pytech microcontroller yes very true uh, uh, microcontroller we have left long back uh, in our Uh, regime right now we are working on microprocessor based solutions but yes you can work with us for microcontrollers also if it is required yeah i think they want uh, he his pointer is towards anything like it could be microprocessor microcontroller yeah. so they want that they can customize or not so probably yes uh, you say that it is uh, possible right yeah yeah i already answered in my earlier question also that uh, everything is available on github it's right, an open right. source yeah. open source okay. type of Okay, okay thank you sir uh, next question is from prenka sharma uh, in data science what is role of digitization of medical equipment uh, should i yeah yeah please sir you can tell okay. so medical equipments as uh, i wanted to answer to you that we are already in india developing we started our development of my, uh, medical products in india by starting the usefulness of your oximeter or this thing oxygen that uh, was very much sold out in uh, the time of corona so if you digitize what is the role of digitization here right now you whatever the oximeters you are getting in the market you can save the data in the oximeter itself if you are purchasing a costlier type of product but if what we have developed that is aadhar card enabled data uh, collector with oximeter pulse oximeter so as soon as we input your aadhar card number and you put your finger your data entire data will go in the cloud and there it can be utilized at any moment of time how you are behaving in this season how you are behaving in cold uh, how you are how your body is behaving in summers how your body is behaving in 
uh, rainy season. So these type of digitizations will help the me medical doctor or medical fraternity to get the best analytics of the medicines and all these things. So digitization of medical equipment is really useful and it will be a great help for the mankind. Yes, sir. And one more thing I would like to add, like we are doing predictive maintenance for machine. Similarly, we can do predictive maintenance for the humans. So the yes. people who are patient in the hospital, we can monitor their vitals and we can do all kind of predictable risk, like what kind of uh, issue they can have in future that also we can predict. So that is uh, like a huge role uh, of data science machine learning in medicals. Um, okay, so next question uh, uh, to you, uh, Arun sir, directly. Uh, we are capturing machine count data. Can we directly replace back of system to Phytech PLC? This is from Lynn Gaikubert. Uh, Sure. So you can read okay. it, sir. Yeah. Sure, no problem. Uh, Milin, nice question. And as I have already answered in my earlier uh, answers that uh, we, uh, Phytech PLC is not a product. We are not talking of product, any product or Phytech is selling any product. We are interested that you develop a digital controller on your own using a SBC and a processor. Processor can be utilized, your ARM processor, as you must be have seen that we are using ARM Cortex processors. So ARM processors, according to the requirement of the industry, mostly the industry data will be from the sensors and we have to collect those data and do a prop, uh, analytics in the edge computing device. So there is no role of, uh, in the coming time, the PLCs will be replaced with these type of direct digital converters. So you can do that, okay? Anything? Am I okay to you, or uh, any question is left out? Kaushal ji, कुछ add करना चाहते हैं तो बताइए। Yes sir, so we are already developing this kind of solutions based on Fitech um, uh, SBC. Uh, for IoT gateways that can replace this uh, the PLC or this kind of things that we can. Kaushal ji, yeah. if you can spare me a minute, I can share the screen where I can show you a working example of uh, this product. Okay, sir. I think it is visible. Yes, sir. Uh, your screen is visible, sir. Okay. Milind, here you can see that we have used current transformer, smart energy meter, and then proximity sensor, flow sensor, pressure sensor, level sensor to our 8 channel, 4 to 20 milliamps input and 4 channel K type thermocouple can be also utilized. And at the end, you can see the edge computing device. I hope it is more clear. And then if you go to the next slide, we send this data on HTTP or Ethernet to the data analytics dashboard. Is yes, it sir. visible? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, dear. Okay. Thank you, sir. So let us take next question. Uh, there is one question from Devendra Gope, but I it is incomplete question. Digital welding he has mentioned, but I don't know what uh, does he mean. Uh, can you guess sir, something? What digital, digital welding? I am working with two three customers where uh, welding is uh, automated. Uh, is one of my customer from Turkey is here. He was having uh, analog welding machines. Now we are putting some brain inside that. Okay, sir. So if that is a, his query, I think uh, it can be useful for it. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So next question, next question is what kind of GPS technologies are going to be used in future? So I would like to say that if you are talking about positioning uh, technology, so uh, so far GPS is not working fine in indoor. So uh, if we have to do announce enhancement in the positioning system, then indoor there are many many technology. 5G is also supporting that one, and different kind of uh, uh, like uh, communication technology, wireless communication technology. They, those are also supporting indoor positioning. So there are definitely a uh, uh, Huge possibility to do research for precise positioning indoor and outdoor in compared to GPS. 
uh arun sir you want to add more yeah Please. basically i think uh, you all must be knowing that india is also doing lot of uh, uh, work in gps technology that is gnss so we have to promote those type of techni- technologies and because gps is a very important uh, uh, tool if somebody hacks this then he can know about us everything can be open to him and he can sabotage sabotage our systems so it is always better to work for indigenized gps technologies which is uh, being developed in india right now okay sir next question is how digital transformation helps in data analytics program from niranjan sahu so yeah. Yes, sir. You want to take? Yeah. Uh, First up, I will give it, and uh, then you add to it. A digital transformation, as I have already told, that without digitization, digital transformation is not possible. So, if the data is not collected from the sensors or from any part of it, and it is not digitized, there is there cannot be any digital analytics can be done on it. That. So, this is my piece of information for you. Yes, Kaushal, you can add. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. So uh, you have rightly said. So basically, uh, as we discuss, digital transformation is a complete process where we use different kind of technology. So we take IoT, uh, cloud computing, data science, machine learning, all these things when we bring together to make the digital transformation. This is used for the data analytics. So ultimately, we have to make the business intelligence decisions, smart business intelligence decisions. based on the different kind of it and ot data so ultimate aim for digital transformation is to make uh, intelligent decisions so that would be possible with data analytics only uh, so i think uh, sir uh, we have completed all the questions that was listed here thank you uh, okay so uh, i would like to thank each and everyone who participated in this uh, webinar on um, we weekend uh, uh they spared their valuable time for this uh, this part uh thanks uh, arun sir for uh, uh, devoting your time for and sharing your knowledge with all the people and definitely we would like to continue these kind of sessions in future where we can bring more uh, information our latest uh, development from our side and share with the people and uh, people can also come with us uh, they can uh, join hands to develop or uh, Um, like uh, there are a lot of initiative from government side also to uh, make a startup their own startup entrepreneurship so they can take our help our uh, like fight, they can take fitech uh, som and uh, they can develop their own solutions and government is giving lot of funds in this uh, these areas probably arun sir you can yeah uh, put more information yeah <laughs> sure i will be really great i'm really grateful to kaushal ji's team and all the participants thank you very much and basically uh, i will tell that indian government is doing a lot if you have any innovative idea at first go we can get a fund of 20 lakhs that is funding means it is uh, it is a grant not to be returned and if you if that product is being selected then you can make start your own manufacturing unit with the help of the government by getting investment up to 50 lakhs so you can just uh, visit prism p r i s m prism is the uh, is the scheme where you can go for it and if you have any idea or any innovative idea you just come to us come to kaushal ji come to me I, we will be really helpful to you for getting your idea converted into a product and as kaushal ji has told many more startup and innovation and these type of things are already available from government of india any other okay. question one question is there i think so no uh, okay. so Yes, uh, Mr. Milan was asking for the contact uh, information, so I have provided my and your email ID. The, anybody sure. can contact uh, any of us, and we would be happy to help you out. So thanks, everyone. Uh, if there is no more question, we can conclude the session for today. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, uh, uh, Arun sir. Uh, have a nice day, and uh, we will see uh, again soon. Yeah.
and as i have mentioned that atmanirbhar bharat is only possible with the help of people like you thank you okay thank you everyone thank you